going. Listen, before all of that, what's with the pen? I was like, let's get going. <laughs> so extra, I love it. <laughs> now, before all of that, mm. it's panto season, you know. I don't right. know if you know, it's literally around the corner. Oh, oh no, no, it isn't. Oh, oh it. yes, it is. Rehearse that with you. Should we want to do it again? Yes. OK, let's go back to the beginning. Here we go. Before all of that, though, did you know panto season is just around the corner? Oh, oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is. And Jamie on camera two. Smash that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jamie. Oh, yes, it is. And who better to get us prepared than the most qualified man for the job? Uh, Jefferson Parler is one of the first people to have completed a master's degree in pantomime. And it's paid off since graduating. He has landed his first ever professional role as Simple Simon in Jack and the Beanstalk. Uh, so, ahead of the debut, Jeffrey's joining us now with to share his journey and what he learned. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for having me on, you oh, two. Nice oh, to is this you. your Great. Simple Simon outfit you're wearing this right now? This is the Cadbury's Double Decker Simple Simon outfit, yeah. Oh, yes. and this is a dream come true for you, isn't it? It's been a dream since I was six years old. And so where did it stem from? Where did this love of panto come from for you? So it was my mum and dad taking me to the panto at the Theatre Royal in Plymouth every year. Yeah. And I remember Gary Wilmot doing his panto. I mean, Gary was so amazing. Though. So funny. What a, yeah, he, what, he still does it. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. He? But like, what a great entertainer. And like... He's captivating. And I remember watching him as soon as he came onto the stage and he said, hiya, kids. We got hiya, um, Dick. He was playing Dick at the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> And it was just that moment when I was the eighth. That's when I went. It's got a bit of panto already. It has a little bit, hasn't it? <laughs> Been on there for like two seconds, haven't we? I've never seen this kind of stuff in Birmingham Honestly, last year. Honestly, I know. We know what your panto's going to be like, Alison, don't we? Well, we why am I getting involved? <laughs> just tell me a story. Come on, come on. And that's when I turned to my mum and dad and I said, this is what I want to Did do. Did you? At that young age? That you just young age. Knew, this is what I want to do. Exactly. It was the ability of making people laugh with just a simple little pun, little joke, and just being around people that... Do you know what I mean? it's... Something so captivating about pantomime when you were a kid as well, isn't there? I, remember, I mean, I, everyone remembers the first one, or, like, remember Colchester Mercury, and then my auntie used to live in South London, so I remember the Wimbledon always had a big pantomime, so I remember mm. going down the... I suppose yours must have been Birmingham. Yeah, I used to love... My favourite pantomime was Cinderella. Oh, I love the Cinderella. Are those the sort of characters you like, like the buttons role? Is that the, the, the characters that it you're is, drawn yeah. to? It's the comedy characters. It's the ones that, you know, bring the kids in, play games with the kids, have that cheeky innuendo yeah, to I like the mums yeah. and dads. Yeah. They're the best. So, and the thing is, there's one thing you want to be in a panto. There's, it's another thing to actually get into panto, isn't it? It's, it's tough. I mean, I was meeting the cast backstage every single year, asking them how they got involved. But back then, there was no training. There was no worthwhile opportunities, no mentorship. So I... They... So how do you get into Panto, then? How do you get a part in it? Tough. Um, I mean, a lot of the auditions I went to was, Jeff, very accomplished audition, but because you haven't had that experience, we don't want to take you on just yet. Oh. Which is very... It's sadder than that, Alison. Well, I bet you... Oh! <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, how can you get experience if they don't give you a chance? Exactly. But that's when the Masters um, came up and I thought this is an opportunity that I do not want to miss. So I, I grasped that. And then that's opened up the opportunity to so many, so many castings. And... So, because it's a Masters, had you already done a degree in... You've been to drama school or anything like yeah, that? Yes, so I trained in musical theatre. Right. Um, I was an actor and a singer who could make it, make it look like I could dance, but I was, I was a terrible dancer. But it was always comedy and it was always panto. Yeah. So I learnt the basics of acting and singing and I've been lucky enough to work as a singer and an actor for the last few years. Right. But it's always been panto. That's always been... You just had your, your mind on that. Yeah, that's always Aww. been the thing that's... That was missing, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the course? Was you quite impressed with it? I know it was £10,000. You got a scholarship. Yeah, so yeah, I got a bit of money towards it, which was fantastic. Um, uh, it was a fantastic course because they catered to what you wanted to do. Not, there was four of us on the course in total. One person wanted to go into writing, the other directing, the other did it for a bit of fun. So they catered the course to what you wanted to achieve. So for me in particular, it was comedy techniques, looking at comedy timing, looking at how to deliver, like, the ghost gag, the it's-behind-you gag, because that's all stock routines that require 
specific rehearsals. That's, and ma that's mad, isn't it? It was, it was bonkers. I didn't even know you could have a degree on panto. No, no. one no one gave me a degree in panto. No, you don't need it. You're the panto queen. Oh, Come thanks, on. Bob. Got this. Thank you. So you didn't necessarily... It's not like you left and you got a job straight away, right? It's... No, not at all. And um, I think there's a sort of myth where you, you know, unless you're one of the very lucky ones, you graduate and go straight into a job. For me, I graduated a year ago yesterday and I was still auditioning. I was still knocking on producers' doors and I still wasn't getting anywhere. It's crazy. Until Ryan from Spark Life Pantomimes uh, actually heard of the media attention that this story got and had me in mind for Simple Simon sent in a self-tape and he offered me the job within two hours right. of... See, all those panto producers now, they're all kicking themselves. They're watching you on this morning now. They're That's all kicking... You should have got him on our panto. That's Here's a question, but basically, <laughs> when do you start in the year on panto? Because you, you can start quite early in I'm the year. I'm starting on the 9th of December. What oh, about you? Yeah, so I start rehearsals on the 6th, but we don't actually open till the 20th. So we're quite late in comparison yeah. to some other... Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable But the team starts super early, don't they? Like, the, the, the team will be at it sort of probably, autumn, or...? Probably, probably. They're probably... Well, they're at the it now. They're writing stuff. the scripts and everything like that, because they, exactly. they want to keep it updated as well and exactly. relevant. And for the producers, it's a full-year job, because right. they've got January, you've got what pantos are we doing this year, who are we going <laughs> to cast, logistics, what's the set going to be look like, what music can we use, can we get the rights to the music? Also, it's popular music, so what's in the charts, what will kids like? And also, what were the adults like? So it is for producers. Epic it's a three hundred sixty-five days. Well, that's when I went to see Al last year. Like you just you walk, you walk in, and I knew it was going to be big, but it really took me back as to how, like the bells and whistles, like yes, the giant yeah. and Jack and the Beanstalk. You loved it, didn't oh, you? Oh my god, it's incredible! I could see you in the audience loved as well. It. Loved <laughs> it. So you've got your big dream. Tell us where you're going to be. So I'm going to be at the Corn Hall in Dis in Norfolk, which is actually where my dad grew up, oh, that's which nice. makes it kind of special. Um, Congratulations! It's a nice um, town, Dis. Thank as you well. so much. Beautiful. Beautiful you got your place. dream. Are you going to do some exercises with us or something? What, okay. what are you going to do with us? Well, let's get you up. On yeah, your we want to. We want to yeah, train in panto. Come on. Come on. Exactly. What are we going to do? Yeah. You'd know about this. Let's just give them a bit of encouragement. Yes, sir. It. So, yeah. Thanks. Good, luck. Good luck around here. <laughs> so, Alison, I'm going to start with you. Yes. OK. What do I this need is, to do? This is the, uh, oh, yes, it is. Oh, no, it's not oh, technique. Sure. OK. <laughs> so, I want you to come up with, like, a statement. Maybe, like, I'm the best presenter on daytime television. Something like that, you okay. know? OK. Yeah. No, I've, I've got what I'm going to do. Yeah? Yeah? You got this? Yeah. Yes. Did everybody know that Jefferson is in panto? Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, he's not. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, no, you're not. Jamie's good, isn't he? He is really yeah, good. Jamie's, Jamie's all over it. Camera on. two. It's he's it. got this. Very good. Nice. Give her a round of applause. Thank very you. Nice. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah, Matt, this is your moment. Your turn. Do I need Come to? on up. OK, so this is called the it's behind you oh, technique. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, lovely. And your line is, oh, no, it's not. Yeah. But okay, I can do that. we have got a very special guest to help us out with this oh, one. Oh, yeah. OK, very good. OK. Kirin, our very special guest. Here we come. <laughs> oh, my goodness. There we go. Who's in there? There we go. So... <laughs> Who's that? So, I want you to... Uh, there is a horse behind Dermot. It's behind you, Dermot. Oh, no, there isn't. No, oh, yes, yes there, there is. is. Oh, no, there isn't. Oh, yes, yes there, there is. is. Dermot. Look. There's no way there's a horse behind you. Oh. <laughs> Brilliant. Can the horse there reveal themselves? Reveal yourself, horse. Mm. Oh, no! Oh, it's Gerald! Gerald to the back end! It's even Lester. Do you want to spend the morning with your head up, Giles Brandris? <laughs> and you want the answer? We all do. Yes, so 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 when I talk out of my behind, people <laughs> often say, who do you sound like? And now we know it's Vanessa. <laughs> but I think this is so wonderful, you know, because pantomime is the only unique contribution from this country to world culture. No, but <laughs> every is, other country's got ballet, opera, right. but yeah. we're the only people who've got panto. <laughs> Giles, have you done panto ever? I have done panto. Baron Hardup in Cinderella, Barbara Windsor was the Fairy oh, Queen. Barbara. Bonnie Lang was well, oh, Cinderella. Oh. What Brian time Conley to be alive? Was buttons. Vanessa. Excuse what about me, you, Vanessa. Excuse me. The genie of the ring at Woking. Oh, wow. got John of Inman oh. as Widow wow. Wanda Twanky and Gary Wilmot as Aladdin. Come on. These were the Come glory on. days. I know. That was the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, we've run out of time. Thank you so much, yeah. everyone. Oh no, Good we have Panto. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck, Panto, Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you very shortly. Hi, everyone. Just wanted to say thank you for visiting our This Morning YouTube channel. Now, listen, we upload 
upload new content every day. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out. And we'll see you in the morning.